So today I would like to get the enclosure put together. I have all the parts printed back here that you're supposed to print. And I have the um, kit here. Let's take a look at it. I really haven't taken a look at it yet. I've just been so busy doing other stuff. Let's get a look at it and let's see what's in it. Let me switch the light on here. I've got a set of PDF ins instructions, but I'm hoping that it is going to um, come with instructions in the box that are large enough for me to view. Thank you. Okay. Nice. I always like to be thanked. Okay, so we do have an installation guide. What form is it in? A fold-out? A giant fold-out? Um, yes, it's a giant fold-out. All right. Say so I have it in PDF form. So um, if I have to, I'll bring my tablet in. But this isn't too bad. I can see that. All right. So what else did we get in there? Between this and the 3D printed parts, it's supposed to be everything, so I should be good to go. Um, here's the panels. Nice. That's very nice. These are probably have some kind of covering on them, I think. I don't know, but I think they do because they're not very clear. So I'm hoping they do. Let's set those aside for now. Put those down there out of harm's way. And what else do we have? All right. We have a top cover for the um, for the hot end because top cover or side cover? I think it, that's the top cover because we have to change the location of something or other. So it requires a top cover change. Here's a little plastic part. Don't know why they didn't have us 3D print that. Here is a plastic drag chain. Probably honestly could have 3D printed that too. But And then we have a bunch of little chunks of Bowden tube. We have, geez, we have a package of little bitty magnets. Must be a 50 of them in there. We have some M3 by 8 screws, some M3 by 25 screws. A whole bunch of M4 by 6 screws. Not sure what these are. ST 2.9 by 9.5. My goodness, there's a lot of fasteners. M3 by 20. M3 nuts. M3 by 16, one M3 by 16 shoulder bolt, and a hex, a couple of hex wrenches, and a little Phillips screwdriver. All right, I'm going to start doing it. Let's, I'm going to move the camera back and let's start putting this together. So, step one is install guard plates A1 and A2. There are some of the 3D printed parts. So, there's some instructions you have to remove some of the screws put them back after the plates are on you have to put in some screws they provided step two is to install the hinges we printed I printed step three is install guard plates B1 and B2 and step four is to install the guard plates C1 and C2 step five is guard plates D1 and D2 step six is magnets step seven is magnet holders Okay, so let's get the guard plates on first. Because that just is all fairly straightforward, just putting them in and screwing them on. So probably set this to a um, time lapse. And let me get that done. Okay, my side plates and hinges are installed. Not the side plates, all the guard plates and hinges are installed. That went pretty trouble free. I did a couple things in the wrong order. That's probably just me. Next step is to install the magnets and the magnet holders and then to glue the magnet holders into the side plates and then install the side plates. And by side plates, they're talking about the clear panel. So I'm gonna do that next. 
Okay, there are our two side panels, and yes, there is protective film on both sides of that. And um, really, it was pretty easy to do. If you're anything like me with glue, you might want to have somebody come and help you that's a little bit neater than I am. I really only messed up with the glue in one spot, which for me is pretty good. So that actually went really easy. Um, required six magnets, and they certainly provided enough. So that all went really well. I tapped the magnet into the magnet holder with a hammer. Could have used a pair of pliers, but the hammer was sitting right there, so why not? So what's next on the list after the side panels? Install magnets into the door handle. Install the front door plate and front door handle. All right. Okay, that is the side panels and the front door plate. Um, the front door plate fitment was a little finicky. You might have saw I put it on upside down first, which isn't a big deal. But it kind of binds back in here slightly before it kind of gets about a, you know, a quarter of an inch from closing. Um, if I were a stickler for details, I would probably go in and clearance some of this. But you know what? I'm not going to let perfection stand in the way of good enough, and that is absolutely good enough. So, next step, install the PTFE tube and filament sensor. They assumed it was already off, and it wasn't, of course. And install the spool holder and the drag chain as well. This is where I think it's going to get a wee bit technical, but um, instructions look pretty well detailed, so hopefully it won't be a big deal. If something turns out to be a big deal, I will um, bring you in and show you. Well, there's one thing here I kind of don't like, and that is how they've relocated the filament out sensor. It goes, it mounts on the spool holder. You put nuts in the bottom, which they provided, and that's fine. And it mounts to there like that, but there's not enough wiring to route it around its bottom. They give you a hole in the spool holder, which I'm assuming the wiring is supposed to come up through, but um, there's just not enough to route it around so that it's gonna constantly be against the wire. Um, I'm gonna have to fool around with that a bit. I don't like it. Um, one cool thing is they give you two short pieces of the, P of the Bowden tube to slide in there for your spool roller to roll across. That's very simplistic and kind of ingenious way to make the spool roll smoothly without, you know, using bearings or anything like that. Something I wish I had a thought of. Anyway, I'm going to try and figure out a better solution to that. I don't like that. Okay, so literally 10 seconds after I made that last video clip, it dawned on me that the filament out sensor doesn't have to go in the kind of the orientation the Bowden tubes originally had it in. It can go in any direction, so one could spin it around and put this right up to this. You just got to reverse the position of the Bowden tubes. Duh. Okay, I'm much happier with all that now. The next step is get the drag link chain started and then remove the front cover, top cover, and extruder cable and install the drag link chain clip. Okay, and then install the extruder cable and new top cover. Okay, going to work on that next. So I was a little bit confused. <laughs> Nothing special about that. But I was a little bit confused about getting the drag link chain on. So what they want you to do is take the Take the Bowden tube completely out or use the one they provided if it's long enough. It might not be long enough. No, I think that's for something else. And feed it all the way through like that yourself. And then, and you want to take the clips off that hold the wiring to the Bowden tube. It has these, um, see if I can find one. It has these little S clips. You need to take those off, it looks like to me. And then once that's done, I'm going to poke this back into the into the um, filament feeder just to kind of hold on to it. And then this is all going to come to right about there. So you just come into this opening and you just start 
poking the um if you can there you go you just start poking the um the wiring in now the question is should the wiring go below or above the Bowden tube because it looks like they're showing it should go below the Bowden tube is that right let me get a better pair of glasses on also they have a video on YouTube you can look at it and um, it's it's on that link that I'm that I put into the comments but let me go back and look to see if that's how they did it yeah they show the wiring below the Bowden tube so that's what I'm going to do and keep working it in there well that's done and I'm not afraid to tell you that was a first class pain in the ass I am not particularly thrilled with that whole reverse the ninth link in the drag chain business it did not this whole thing up here did not hardly make any sense at all to me until I was completely done with it and the problem when things don't make any sense and you can't wrap your head around it is that you don't know if you're doing it wrong until it's all together and it doesn't work right and um, I found that to be pretty frustrating anyway I think it's all right now. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I'm all right now, but I think it's okay now. And if we move on now to step 18, and I think I have all this back together. Um, install magnets into riser A. Now we're in the parts that come up from the top and cover it. Install two magnets, assemble risers, install magnets into the bottom of risers. And it looks like there's <laughs> like four, eight, 12 15 magnets in the bottom so that's what all those extra magnets are for and they say use instant use glue super glue and install the top cover handle install the riser and top cover locate the screen cable install the shielding plate all right let's get the let's get this part done So there you have it. It is all done. This took me about three, maybe three and a half hours, not counting food breaks and bathroom breaks to complete. And um, I don't know. I'm sure what you're going to ask me is, is it worth it? And the answer, I think, is if you have a 5M and you want it enclosed, absolutely 40 bucks for the kit and the 3d then the, you know a couple spools of filament probably not even that much for the 3d printed parts three hours of your time absolutely it's worth it if um if you don't have a printer and you're looking to buy one and you're a cheapskate like me absolutely it's worth it if you can throw another 200 bucks at your printer go ahead and buy the pro get it already enclosed, get the filtration system, and all of that. As far as building it is concerned, I got to tell you, there are parts of it that I think was absolute genius in design. And there are parts of it which, honestly, are kind of hokey. This front panel across here, for example, it's kind of hokey. I'm not that thrilled with it, and I might redesign it and make another one. And I might just glue it in place just because it's hokey. Um... As far as the noise level is concerned, I don't know if you can hear the difference, but it really quiets it. This lid is hokey. It's probably going to get some hinges on it. But it, it really made a difference in the sound. And of course, now I'll be able to print ABS and nylon and ASA and all the other stuff that I want to be able to print. So all in all, there you have it. I'm, I'm pleased. I wish that the instructions had been 
and the instructions weren't bad. The instructions combined with the video, there was only a couple of places where I was really kind of stumped. And the drag chain fitment around the hot end was one of them. And um, might have been me, you know, who knows. And you might put yours together quicker than me. Whenever there was a 50-50 shot of doing something one way or the other and I wasn't sure, I picked the wrong way every time. You know the rule, my rule, I do it nice because I do it twice. None of it was a big deal. It was just undoing it and doing it the right way. And like I say, some of the fitment is genius. And some of it's a little bit on the hokey side, but not much of it. So um, all in all, I'm pretty pleased. I'm happy I did it because I want to get back to being able to print ASA and nylon and all that stuff. So all the links will be below. There'll be affiliate links, at least the ones to Amazon. And um, if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments. And I will talk to you in the next one. Bye for now.